Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. And this is Mary Lou Arreño. So on my last video, I, I have shown you the part one of uh, 4th of July celebration. And I promise to show you the part two. But unfortunately, up to now, I am fixing my video. And it seems uh, having a trouble uh, I don't know if it is corrupted, but we're trying to fix it and uh, I'll show it to you. But for the meantime, I'm going to discuss with you the difference between the J1 and H1 visa and what do you prefer. So uh, for most teachers, they are coming to the United States on a J1 visa. And J1, as I have explained in uh, my previous series, especially the series number one, when you are a J-1 teacher, you are going to go to the United States as an exchange, teach, uh, exchange teacher or cultural exchange teacher program, wherein you just need to stay for a maximum of five years. And then if you are subject to two-year rule, they call it the 212E, wherein uh, after your five-year maximum stay in the United States, you need to go home to share what you learned in your home country. So that is the J-1 visa. And for uh, most school, they use that route because it's an easy process. There's a sponsoring agency that can process your DS 2019 really quickly. And then once you get, get that DS 2019, you just set a schedule to the U.S. Embassy for interview. You get a visa and uh, book your ticket. So that's uh, easy and fast. And most school district, they prefer teachers to go on a J-1 visa. So what about H-1 visa? H-1, as I have explained in my series number one, this is the working visa. And if you are applying in the US, you can ask your employer if they are willing to do H-1 visa for you. Because some district, they, they do it. What is the advantage of having an H-1 visa or working? Once you get the visa and um, the employer hired you and they like your performance, you are not subject to two year rule, it means you can extend your stay in the United States. And if you are fortunate, you can change your visa after that to a green card, or they call it the permanent visa or permanent resident visa in the United States. So how are you going to do that process? If your employer is knowledgeable about the process of uh, hiring people under H-1 visa, there's no issue about that. But the thing is uh, some district or some employers, they have no experience on hiring teachers from other countries. So you need to some kind of educate them as well or inform them of the process. So how are you going to do that? So if you plan to request from your employer to hire you on an H-1 visa, first thing you need to know is if that school district or employer, are they affiliated to a university? Even though they are K-12 school, some district, they have affiliation to universities wherein uh, they send their teachers or even their uh, high school seniors to a dual credit or send their teachers for further training. So that is what they call affiliation. Why is it helpful for your employer to have an affiliation to universities if they are planning to hire teachers on an H-1? And the reason behind that is uh, if the school district has university affiliation, you do not have to undergo on what they call lottery for H-1 visa. So if you remember, I mentioned that every year, the United States, they issue 65,000 
uh, H1 visa, but this is for all over the world. It means if you are coming from a country, let's say the Philippines, you are going to compete with all the nations in the world who are also interested in applying for H1 visa. So you, you are going on a lottery. It's like you, they will file for your H1. And then if you get selected, then you are lucky, okay? So it's like winning the lottery. And uh, that is 65,000 for all over the world. That's a lot. But knowing how many people are applying for H1, sometimes it's the competition is also high. But if the school district has an affiliation to a university, you do not need to go to that lottery or like their drawing names. You can go straight and uh, be, I mean, in the process and be in line for the processing of your H1B. So that is the number one that you need to know or ask if they have affiliation to the university then it would be easy. They don't need to go on a, on a draw or a lottery to choose for their H1, uh, I mean J1, I mean H1 teachers, okay? So, so but the, the catch for this process is they need an attorney, an immigration lawyer to help because uh, the, the process is complicated they have to go to the Department of Labor to kind of advertise the position. They need to establish that the position that they are um, trying to fill is so hard to fill in the United States. It means the, there is a scarcity in that position that needs to be established in the Department of Labor in the US. They call it the PERM process. But once you pass that, and then uh, they'll file your H1, it, it will be quick, especially if the school district has an affiliation. And then you have to wait for your uh, like contract and the approval. And then after that, you will go the same process. Like in J1, you need to book for an interview to the embassy to get your H-1 visa or the working visa, okay? And once you get that, I think the maximum uh, number of years that they give for one H-1 visa is up to six, but sometimes they do extend depending on the situation. But if you have a good performance and your employer likes you, you they can uh, actually petition you for a green card after that. You don't need to go home or you don't need to have a two year residency. So just, just think about it. So when you are applying and you know you are highly qualified, you can negotiate uh, to have a J1 or an H1, okay? Because for now, J1 is easy in the process but in the long run, it gets so difficult, especially now that uh, the resolution for getting a waiver or no objection uh, is becoming, you know, uh, they don't have really a clear cut criteria. Like, unlike before, if you marry a US citizen or if you give birth in the United States, you can readily available, I mean, eligible for or no objection, but now uh, it's all on the discretion of uh, the committee. But I am not saying that they will not give a no objection. Everyone is still welcome to apply for that. And it's just how you uh, express yourself. Why are you qualified for that no objection letter so that you can uh, waive your two year residency. So just, just an advice. If you, are, if you are an applicant, you can inquire to your employer if they are petitioning for H1. So it's like J1 versus H1. So it's up to you, but it, it's also an easy process. You just need to inform your, your employer that if they have an affiliation, they don't need to go on a lottery. And another uh, disadvantage for the employer if you are uh, asking for 
H1 is the cost. Usually H1 is costly because they need to pay all those sponsorship to the Department of Labor for the filing and all that because that's according to the law of the United States. But uh, sometimes school district, they have funds to do that under the recruitment. So there's no harm in trying. Okay, so that is another option for you, whether you do J1 or H1. So good luck to all the applicants. And then if you have questions, just let me know. You can write your comment down below and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend at Mary Lou Areno. For more questions, email me also at theteachersbestfriend at gmail.com. So thank you for watching and to God be the glory. See you next time. Bye.